Hey everyone, I wanted to take this time to start a new series of educational videos on my YouTube channel. And the first one today is going to be about Afro-Latin music, salsa music, Afro-Cuban music. Um, I don't even remember the first time I really discovered Afro-Cuban music or Afro-Latin music. I've been playing it for over 20 years and it's been uh, kind of part of my artistic identity. So I wanted to talk about how I conceive of it, the things that help me, and the things I listen for when I'm in a band situation playing that music. The first part to understand the absolute core fundamental of Afro-Latin music is the clave. These are claves, the instrument, and the pattern that they play is also called the clave. Uh, I'm not really going to get into percussion and things today because I am not a percussionist. I will link to the Bobby Sinatria videos on Vic Firth uh, below in the description. He's a fantastic Afro-Latin drummer and explains this music incredibly well. Um, but just some of the fundamentals. So these are claves and they dictate the pattern of the clave. The clave is a two-bar pattern. There is a side with two strokes and a side with three strokes. Here's the pattern if it starts on the two side. So we're gonna have two hits and then three hits. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. So that would be the son clave, two, three. So if you see charts that say son, two, three, or two, three clave, that is more than likely what they mean. So one more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. That's the pattern. And then three, two would be just taking the bars and flipping them around. So it would be like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three. So as you see, the side with two hits is the second bar now. All your piano patterns, which are called montunos, will follow the direction of the clave. Now, how do we tell the direction of a clave in a band situation? There is not always someone playing explicitly either the instrument claves or even the clave part. The two most important instruments that I listen for in a band situation are the timbales and the cowbells or the campana, which are played both by the timbalero, the timbales player, and the bongocero, the bongo player. So we're gonna talk about the two cowbell patterns because I don't own a set of timbales in here. I'm gonna play the cowbell with my hand because it's big and it's loud and I'm in my house like everybody else is these days. Um, so the most directional pattern is the bongo bell pattern. The way to tell where the bongo bell is, is for listening to the two side. So if I play a two, three bongo bell pattern, and I'll play it with my hands, is this. One, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, and one. So you see on the two side, there's three quarter notes in a row. One, two, three, four, and one. Two and three, four and one, two, three, and one, two and three, four and. So when I hear those three quarter notes, I know that's the two side. Now on top of the bongo bell, the timbalero will often play the mambo bell pattern, which is this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three and four and one and two and three, four and one, two, three and four and one and two and three that the downbeat, the one, is only on the two side of the, of the clave. One more time, here's the pattern in two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, and. So 
So our Montunos will follow these patterns, will follow the direction of the clave, and will try to lock in with both the timbales and the cowbells. Those are the two main things I listen for in a band situation. So now we're going to get to a bunch of examples of three different styles, three different introductory styles of Afro-Latin piano. We're going to look at the guajira, the son montuno, and the mambo in both 2-3 and 3-2. So we've talked about rhythm a little bit, now let's talk about harmony. Harmony is actually quite simple in uh, Afro-Latin music, especially if you already know anything about Western harmony or jazz theory or anything like that. We're going to start with the guajira pattern, and in this example I'm just using three chords, one, four, and five in the key of C. So C major, F major, and G major. And in the first example where my hands are together, I'm starting in first inversion, which means I'm starting from the E. So both my hands are in the same triad shape, E, G, and C on top. And then voice leading is the same as if I were voice leading in classical chorale writing or in jazz or whatever. So I'm going to move to my F chord by keeping the C on top. So I go from C major to F major root position, F, A, and C. And then I just move that whole chord up one step to G, G, B, and D in both hands. The difference is that all montunos are basically arpeggios with some decoration. So instead of playing them as solid chords, I'm arpeggiating them or breaking them up through the rhythm of the clave and the montuno. So the guajira pattern is the most even and repetitive of all Afro-Latin patterns. Um, you can even get away with not pushing the three side. Um, but the example that I've given is constructed this way. So we arpeggiate the C major triad. And then we go back down to the lowest note, the E. Then up to F. Then we have a double stop of the other two notes in the triad, the A and C. We go down to a chromatic approach note, the F sharp. And then land on the G. Then another double stop, the B and the D back to G, down to F, double stop A and C, and then we play the low E twice. In time, slowly, it would sound like this. One, two, three, and four, and... I'm going to play through some examples of the Guajira pattern with a couple of backing tracks. First, we're going to hear it just with the timbales pattern, the cascara. We're going to hear it with the cowbells alone. And then we're going to put all of those things together. We're going to play these exercises at 70 and 90 BPM.
now we're going to move to Son Montuno, which is sort of the bread and butter of Afro-Latin, Afro-Cuban music. This is the majority of what I play, especially once we hit the cojo section or the choruses of songs. And the Son Montuno is the one that really flips around, depending on the direction of the clave. Uh, harmonically, what's going on is, in this example, I'm just using C minor. And I'm doing the classic descendant, chromatic descending top note. So C minor, C minor major 7, or C minor with a B on top, B natural. C minor 7. In this case, without the bass, it sounds like an E flat triad. And then F. And the fundamental thing that's happening is that I'm going down my my outer note, the chromatic note that's moving is in octaves, sometimes in double octaves, depending on how you voice it. And that's always going down. Okay. My inner voices are the 3rd and 5th, the E-flat and the G in this case. And I can either arpeggiate them or double stop them. So the classic Son Montuno sound that we've all heard before is this. So that's just arpeggiating. So that's just arpeggiating. Now when you land on that last note and the chord changes to F, our double stop also changes to F. To C and F, the notes. And now the walk-up, or how we end the loop, or the cycle of the Montuno, has lots of different variations. I've included different variations in the way I play them in the upcoming examples. The core of my philosophy of playing Latin piano is the three-side is always pushed. The two-side can be pushed sometimes as well, but really the three-side is pushed. So if I play a Son Montuno in 2-3, uh, one, two, one, two, three. Push down, push, sit, push. Now, if it's a 3-2 son montuno, I flip it and the start of the phrase is anticipated. So I'll play the exact same chords, the exact same notes. I'm just going to push the first part of the phrase. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three. So one, two, three. One, two. Examples are at 70 and 90 BPM.
going to look at the mambo pattern now, which is a very common pattern for the verses of songs. So, okay, we're back in the key of C major, on the chord of C major for the mambo. And it's going to start, we're going to start on C. And basically we're, we're arpeggiating a C6 chord, so our notes are C, E, G, and A. And so in octaves, we're going to start on the root, C. We're going to go up to the third. Go all the way down to the fifth. Up to the sixth. And up to the root again. And that pattern repeats with a rhythmic variation. But those are the notes and those are the order of the notes. So very slowly. Ba, 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 ba. So you'll see that the two side, which is the beginning of the phrase, the two side sits mostly on the beats. So the first and second beat have downbeats. One, two, and three, and four, and one. And the three side is almost all anticipated or all pushed. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Once again, the two side really sits down, sits on the downbeats, and the three side is almost entirely anticipated. Okay, we're going to play these with the backing tracks, just the track with all of the instruments in it, at 70 and 90 beats per minute. enjoyed this tutorial. There's lots more to come over the next few weeks and months. If you enjoyed this content and you want to see more educational material from me, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave that thumbs up, ring the bell notification, and also go to my brand new Patreon where you can get all the PDFs and exclusive content for this lesson. Beep, de 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 beep.